what typically happens is you're given either or fallacies all over the place. And a, a lot of, <laughs> I, I won lots of hearts and minds one day in Wisconsin when I insisted in a doctoral seminar that a course in logic should be required of all students going through a doctoral program in biblical studies. <laughs> you know, so I, I have just bounced around. I, 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 pr I really appreciate Providence. I had no sort of conscious direction at any number of points. And again, I just figured it's, you know, I'll, I'll be okay. If, if God's really there, you know, he's, if he's in charge, he'll, he'll fix my boneheaded mistakes. You know, he'll give me some direction when I need it. He'll impede me from just screwing things up too badly. You know, I, I had these thoughts. And when I was in graduate school, like at Penn, um, I would do things like, okay, I want to know, I want to know who, who the biased people are here. Because, <laughs> because we would... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was, I, I'm reading like liberal scholars and stuff like this. And it, you know, I, I'm, I'm okay with that. So I went up to the Semitics reading room at the university of Pennsylvania. This is the Ivy league. And I, and I went through the stacks of the Semitics reading room to look for a, to see how many books I could find that were published by an evangelical publisher. I found one wow. RK Harrison's introduction to the old Testament. Okay, it, 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 and that taught me a great lesson. Again, I, I, I really believe that, look, there's no, none of these questions have been asked. There, there's nothing new under the sun here. There's going to be somebody who has had this question, who has thought deeply about it, and it's just you need to, to give it time to go find an answer. So I, I would also do things like every degree that I pursue, I don't really know what exactly to do, but I'd like it to be harder and more antagonistic because that's probably a good thing. You know, like, like if I'm going to supposed to get a PhD, <laughs> this is what I'm going to do. And, you know, I, I, I would just think thoughts like this. And I, again, maybe I was naive. I don't think I was naive. I think this is good theology. But, uh, I, I, I believe that, that uh, you know, God would be okay. Scripture would be okay. Um, none of these questions are new. And it, it, what, what's probably needed is some good creative thinking about the problem. Tell what me about is. antagonistic. Tell me what you meant by that. That's good. Yeah, I, I, wanted, I wanted to be exposed to um, critical scholarship in the sense that um, the, the professors were teaching things and sort of were at the forefront of their field of ways of approaching scripture that either I, I knew I wasn't or I had been taught was bad, you know, like, like was something to, to stay away from, like higher criticism and things like that. Mm -hmm. hey, what, what you do is you learn that, that every approach to scripture is, is presupposition driven. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the other side will often refuse to admit that they're, they're going to be, they're going to be just like the fundamentalists. They're going to, their, their system is objective. Of course it's objective. How could it not be objective? You know, <laughs> like, like there's, there's no, there's no assumptions driving the bus here. Uh, when there are always assumptions driving the bus. And so yes. the question is, yes. is uh, and with, you know, there's going to be something worth thinking there, uh, worth thinking about that's going to come through. And often the key is how is a question or a problem framed? Uh, you know, how, how do we approach, you know, whatever the, the issue is? Are there really, I mean, what, what happens in biblical scholarship a lot, especially when it comes to, we'll just be broad now, evangelical versus non-confessional, non-evangelical. What typically happens is you're given either or fallacies all over the place. And a, a lot of, <laughs> I, I won lots of hearts and minds one day at Wisconsin when I insisted in a doctoral seminar that a course in logic should be required of all students going through a doctoral program in biblical studies <laughs> and you can hear the crickets chirp <laughs> it's just, wow. it's like, okay i probably won't go down that road too far <laughs> you know it, it was just one of those moments where this is so obvious to me that i don't really find either of these trajectories terribly satisfying so like is there some cosmic rule that says i have to pick one like like where is that you know, but if you question that, 
then there's something wrong with you, either in a fundamentalist context or in a you know, liberal critical, non-confessional context. And I, I just find that objectionable. Um, and I'll, I'll confess, sometimes I find it entertaining, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. But it's sort of just the way it is. And I, I guess it's become kind of a, not a stick that I beat people with, but maybe a little stick that I, I jab people with every now and then that, you know, you ought to, we ought to just admit that we do this. <laughs> you know, like it, it's the most obvious thing in the world, you know, but like, let's just admit it and try to try to come up with something better, take it apart, put it back together again and, and noodle it. 